Pancake everyone, beloved viewers. Evolution is a fascinating thing that has given us the diversity of the natural world, but why has it stopped for some species? And we no longer see transformations like, for example, with monkeys. Let's discuss the topic in today's episode. So what is this process and why did it stop? And most importantly, where was it originally headed? People mistakenly assume that evolution is a process from simple to complex, and therein lies the main misconception that leads to such questions. Over millions of years, many animals and plants in their structure and functions have actually become simpler, yet they're still doing well to this day. Evolution has three main directions. The first is biological progress, followed by stabilization, but then everything becomes cyclical, returning to biological regression. At the same time, biological progress is still the primary and leading direction of development. But not all species are obliged to evolve. Not all single-celled organisms become multicellular. Not all reptiles turn into mammals. There is no species that would follow the same chain of development, arriving at the same result. Rather, it happened that a new species did not replace the previous one, but simply added to the existing one. Otherwise, we would not have such a vast array of biodiversity today. This is explained by the fact that some animals may have been in different conditions, which led to alterations in the process of their adaptation, as well as obvious shifts in the goal, so to speak, of their evolution. For example, monkeys that lived in the African savanna started their path of humanization due to the conditions of life, but the same primates that lived in tropical forests did not experience this change, and became the modern ancestors of chimpanzees according to modern science. And these factors are infinite, ranging from climate to neighboring populations. And based on these facts, humans did not replace primates, but simply added to them. Why can't we recreate those favorable conditions so that the chain of evolution can play out again? It is important to understand that some things are not repeatable. Our world and the one that existed millions of years ago are like two parallel worlds that never existed in the same form. The conditions in the past were hundreds of times more favorable, because there were no harmful industries, and the oceans were not filled with staggering amounts of garbage and waste. Nature ruled everywhere. The climate was more moderate and more humid, Antarctica was not covered in ice, and the temperature between winter and summer did not differ so much. The air had much less carbon dioxide and harmful impurities. Such conditions allowed for quality nutrition, obtaining necessary vitamins, and reduced the risk of sudden natural disasters. It is worth remembering that at that time, the temperature and climate difference on different continents was not as great as it is now. Species found it much easier to develop in warmth, with more oxygen in sunlight, rather than in fog and acid rain. So recreating those same conditions would require millions of years, a rejection of most of the technologies of the modern world, transportation, and industries. And it still wouldn't help to clean up the ozone layer in soil, at least not to the extent it was before. Humans also use resources that cannot be restored, the most popular example being fresh water. In nature, it is not something that is self-renewed, and so its pollution and mindless consumption lead us further and further away from the conditions of the past with each passing day. What if I told you that our lineage is similar to that of a mosquito up to a certain point? Furthermore, even with a dolphin. I know it's hard to believe, but it's true. We shared a common path until a certain point in our development, but then our paths diverged due to a variety of factors, creating completely different species. The phrase humans evolved from monkeys is not entirely accurate. Granted, we do have common ancestors who were human-like chimpanzees with different hair, a similar body to ours, and even some functions, However, there is no concrete evidence that we evolved directly from them. They are merely a common ancestor with whom we, like with dolphins, diverged at some point, and started to create a separate species alongside the existing one rather than replacing it. At the moment, there is no way to say why humans developed such advanced speech and such a large multifunctional brain, which still has not been fully understood. It should be noted that development is also an adaptive process for survival in the environment. Giving a cheetah our brain and trying to explain to it why it's more important than its speed is absurd, because for that animal, survival in its predator environment is crucial. Speech and knowledge are irrelevant in persuading an antelope to surrender. Therefore, in the conditions of the past, human-like creatures needed a brain, speech, knowledge, and even bipedalism for survival. Today, we can only speculate about why this was necessary and what prompted such adaptation. Will we be able to see new, more advanced monkeys in just 30 years? Only if it's 30 million years from now, and if we don't interfere with our smaller brothers, and also don't exterminate them. 
Evolution is an incredibly slow process. Not something that takes decades, it takes ages, millions of years. And even after a long period of time, the individuals we get might only differ slightly from their predecessors. A sudden leap might simply not happen, and it's unlikely that they'll start talking or learn to read Oscar Wilde's works, understanding what's written. Changes happen every day, even if we don't notice them. The process is sequential and requires attention, observation, and conditions. And most importantly, needs. In these conditions, monkeys have no need to talk to us, read, or solve mathematical equations. Eating bananas and swinging on vines suits them perfectly. Claiming that they will need to do all of the above in millions of years is foolish and irrational, because predicting such a huge time period is impossible. Once upon a time, a small blade of grass could not even imagine becoming a dandelion, just as monkeys did not think they would gradually turn into humans. Living conditions in their environment vary, depending on location and climate and the requirements for adaptation and the time it takes to do so vary from centuries to millions of years. We cannot say what will happen to us in 30 years. We can only guess that evolution might create something new. Or we can assume how far humans will go in their attempts to dominate nature and destroy the opportunity for many species to evolve. Why does this whole chain of evolutionary transformations even exist? Now let's get to the heart of the matter. What is the main purpose of all of these improvements? And what is their ultimate goal? The answer is obvious obvious, survival. Nature has no other goal than to preserve biological species and improve their reproductive ability. Even the officially formulated theory of evolution sounds like this. Population characteristics change in response to changes in the environment, with a preference for characteristics that increase the chances of a living organism leaving offspring. And to assume that evolution deliberately wanted to create intelligence in humans so that they could later begin to destroy the planet was clearly not its intention. This is simply a natural process process that is constantly occurring, and moreover even drives extinction in addition to speciation. At the moment, the most popular theory is synthetic evolution, or in simple terms, modern evolutionary synthesis. This theory gained its popularity by transforming the view of a number of classical Darwinian positions together with genetics. It leans towards the idea that evolution occurs with the presence of three components. The first is mutational variants of genes that are not so vivid and not as common in appearance. The second is the factor of recombination combination which creates new phenotypes of individual specimens. Recombination provides a wide variety of genotypes in a population even with a small number of mutations. The final component is the process of matching the phenotype to the conditions. The theory also recognizes natural selection and the struggle for existence, which is an integral part of any evolution. It is worth noting that the population barrier also appears in the theory of evolutionary synthesis, explaining that each species can evolve in absolutely any way, independently of other species. Synthetic evolution shows how heterozygotes serve as a potential source of the process of development and gradual evolution. If we can't recreate the past, we'll demand that monkeys adapt to the new conditions and begin to evolve. Yes, the plan is good, but it's not reliable. They are developing well even now, but the conditions have become hundreds of times worse. There are a bunch of acute problems in the world that not only hinder development, but also lead to the extinction of many animal and plant species. For 65 million consecutive years, the concentration of oxygen remained constant, but over the past couple of years, it has started to rapidly decline, decreasing by 1.02%. Now that might sound small, but in reality, it is a huge amount that we're losing and the biosphere is suffering with temperatures inevitably starting to rise. Drawing from history, the decrease in oxygen is also a characteristic of prolonged ice ages. Now we are dealing with the opposite, global warming, which leads to the extinction of all living things. The climate crisis is a health crisis because it increases the risk of new pathogens with epidemic tendencies. In addition to diseases, another potential problem is mass starvation. Climate change leads to the oxidation and warming of the oceans, destroying marine reefs resources that are a source of food for many people. From recent, more well-known events, we see earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, which also testify to irreversible changes on our planet. Another disaster that has befallen the modern world is the destruction of the ozone layer. Chemicals such as chlorofluorocarbons found in household appliances and halons used in fire extinguishers are extremely harmful to it. The consequences are truly tragic. The weakening of the layer will inevitably lead to the penetration of solar ultraviolet radiation which will enter the oceans and increase the mortality of plants and animals living there. Humans in turn will quickly begin to lose their vision and become susceptible to many diseases. If humanity becomes extinct, the only hope left will be for the repeated evolution of monkeys. 
So what are scientists saying about this situation? Maybe everything is actually ready for transformations, and they're already happening. For now, monkeys are not trying to become human again, and we probably won't witness it. Because in the modern world, it is even more impossible. Scientists are currently studying our quote-unquote ancestors very carefully. For example, research has been conducted on the subject of intelligence and its presence in human-like apes. It has been found that quadrupeds cope well with the surrounding tools, such as a stick to get bait out of a trap and not get caught in it. But scientists could not call it work that happens intentionally and purposefully like it does for humans. Sticks, branches, stones, all of these are accessible to chimpanzees when they live in their typical habitat. Over so much evolution they have certainly learned a lot, began to build makeshift nests and knock fruit off trees, but the actions of an ape with a stick cannot be considered work, simply because they lack the purposefulness that is characteristic only of humans. For an animal, it's a reflex to new conditions. They learn and try to adapt. Often it's also imitation of humans, who chimpanzees see quite often and pick up some habits from. There have also been instances when chimpanzees showed certain gestures that exist to denote specific words, though it has been proven that they do not understand the meanings of what they are showing and for them it's just a scene mannerism. Therefore, speaking in sign language doesn't necessarily mean being human. Thus we come to the conclusion that monkeys cannot become humans, all because they are not practically humans, aside from some individual functions and similarities. To achieve a breakthrough in evolution, it takes enormous time and much more favorable conditions than we have in the modern world. But the most important question is this. Should every monkey become a human? Maybe it's worth for us to become an even more intelligent species. What do you think about this? Share your opinion in the comments down below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to explore ambiguous topics as often as possible. See you next episode.